Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover exponents with negative bases. Remember, an exponent tells us how many times we multiply the base by itself. So let's jump into our examples here, starting with number one, where we have negative five squared. We have a negative five that is within parentheses and then a negative five without parentheses. There is a difference here, so I want to show you how these differ. The parentheses are very important, so something to keep in mind. Let's start with the negative five that's within the parentheses. Now those parentheses indicate that the negative is included or is attached to our base. So we have negative five times negative five. Let's write that out. So negative five times negative five. A negative times a negative equals a positive. So this is going to give us a positive 25. Let's compare that to the negative five without parentheses. So here, that negative is not included or attached. It's not locked to the five, so to speak. So it stays in front. This means the same thing as negative one times five squared or negative, and then we have our five squared and the negative just stays in front. So let's see what those different options look like. So we can think of it as negative one times five squared, or we can think of it as we have a negative in front, it's not attached, and then we have the five squared. So let's start with the negative one times five squared. Well, positive five times five, five squared, that gives us 25. We have to do that five squared first due to the order of operations. That comes before multiplication. So five squared, five times five, equals a positive 25. Then we bring down our negative one. So we have negative one times 25. Well, a negative times a positive equals a negative. So this is going to give us negative 25. That negative stays in front. Or we can think of it as the negative staying in front here, and we have five squared, we do that first, and that negative, again, just stays in front. So five squared is 25, and then the negative is not attached, it stays in front, so we get negative 25. A couple different ways of thinking about it there, but the main point being, the negative is not attached to that five. It just stays in front, so our solution or answer here is going to be negative no matter what. Now, as far as with the parentheses, if we have a negative times a negative, we end up with a positive. Now, there are some cases where we will end up with a negative no matter what, whether we have parentheses or no parentheses, and we are going to take a look at number two to see what that looks like. So let's go on to number two where we have negative two cubed. So let's start with the one with parentheses. So the negative is attached to the two. So this means negative two times negative two times negative two. Let's write that out. So negative two times negative two times negative two. Negative two times negative two, well, a negative times a negative equals a positive, so we get a positive four here. And then we have one more negative two, so a positive four times a negative two, well, a positive times a negative equals a negative. So this is going to give us negative eight. 
Now for this one, we're going to get the same exact answer without parentheses, because remember that negative is going to stay in front. So our solution or answer is going to automatically be negative. Let's see what that looks like. Essentially what we have here is negative one times two cubed, a positive two cubed. The negative is not attached to the two. Well, a positive two cubed is two times two times two. Two times two is four times two is a positive eight. So a positive eight, and then we still have our negative one times that positive eight. Well, a negative times a positive equals a negative. So we end up with negative eight there as well. So in that case, the parentheses do not impact our solution or answer because it's going to be negative either way. Another way to think of that real quick would be leaving the negative in front and then we have two cubed. Remember, the negative is not attached to that two, so we have two cubed, which is eight and then that negative is in front, so we end up with negative eight. So a couple of different ways to think through that as far as leaving that negative sign in front and we automatically get that negative um, solution or answer there. Let's move on to number three, where we have negative three to the power of four. And the negative three is within parentheses, so the negative is attached to that three. It's included with the three. So we have negative three times negative three times negative three times negative three. So let's see what this equals. Well, negative three times negative three, a negative times a negative gives us a positive nine. Then we have times negative three times negative three. A positive nine times a negative three, well, a positive times a negative equals a negative, so this is going to give us negative 27 times a negative three. So we end up with a negative times a negative, which equals a positive. So negative 27 times negative three equals a positive 81. So a positive solution or answer there for number three. And lastly, let's move on to number four where we have negative 10 cubed and our negative 10 is within parentheses. So this means negative 10 times negative 10 times negative 10. Negative 10 times negative 10, a negative times a negative equals a positive. So this is going to be a positive 100. And then we have times negative 10. We have a positive times a negative, so we're going to get a negative. 100 times negative 10 equals negative 1000. And that is our solution or answer there. So there you have it. There's how we evaluate exponents with negative bases. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.